the heart is such an extraordinary symbol in the Shaiva tradition. The Shaiva Tantric tradition uses this term in a very specific way. That essential inmost presence of the divine, the living pulsation of consciousness, the throb of aliveness inside each one and indeed inside everything. It is imminent, it is in everything, and yet it is also beyond everything. Hridaya is the term that is used. And this idea of entering the heart, of somehow locating experientially in our own trajectory what it is that this reality is about. These beautiful texts and these great masters from a thousand years ago and older than that actually, speak to us now in a very modern and accessible way. And this process of, I usually talk about it as the transplantation of the Shaiva Tantric tradition to the West. How can we most appropriately, in a dignified way, in a way that does justice to the depth, the profundity, the esoteric character of these teachings, somehow practice and learn and study what about what these great masters had to say to us. The great teacher Rajanaka Abhinavagupta, who stands out as sort of the first among equals in the lineage streams, these initiatory transmission lineage streams, we will be studying his teachings. As well, of course, he is preceded by many great masters, to name just one, the great master Utpaladeva, whose work called the Ishvara Pratyabhignya Karikas, the verses on the recognition of the divine, the recognition of the Lord, are so important and so central. And Utpaladeva is praised by Abhinavagupta himself as his extraordinary great grandfather teacher. As well, of course, the teachings of Kshemadaja, the one of the primary disciples of Abhinavagupta, and indeed of several other teachers. But particularly, we have before us this extraordinary master, Rajanaka Abhinavagupta. In his invocation to a variety of different texts that he composed, he, write, he writes various kinds of poems of invocation. And I wanted to read two verses. Uh, we're really invoking the Shakti tonight. We're invoking the living potency of consciousness. We're embarking on an extraordinary journey of study, of consideration, of refinement, of depth, of inner transformation, of illumination that uh, makes available the subtle and profound teachings to us in a way that makes them accessible, that makes them comprehensible, that makes them also practical and usable for us in our life. And always the tradition is that at the outset, at the beginning, there must be this conscious turning toward that throb of aliveness of the Mahashakti's extraordinary potency and how that consciousness, aliveness, that thrill of the pulsation of life, in fact, must flow inside each one of us in an accelerated, in an amplified, in a deepened kind of way. And it is that very aliveness that in fact moves our mind to be able to comprehend, to open, to really consider in a way that does justice to these teachings, not just as if they were superficial intellectual teachings or a kind of philosophical argument, but really, statements made by those who had traveled to the utmost, as it were, ultimacy of everything about reality, about life, about consciousness, about the journey itself, and consider those statements in very serious light of our awareness. How do these teachings illuminate our path today in this body, in this time, in this circumstance and culture.